This is Jay Krishnamurti's fifth discussion with teachers at Rishi Valley, 1978. What should we talk about? Could we discuss what it means to be serious? About something or serious or have the quality of seriousness in itself, not about something. Madam, come on. Do you want to discuss that? Come on, sit here. You'll have more room for the others. Or do you want to discuss something else? Yesterday we said, sir, about the clamor, the divisiveness. And we said we are going to continue the talk today. How to, in our mind, or how to see through that, see beyond that. How to go beyond the the clamor of so many opinions, judgments, evaluations and conclusions that exist around us politically, religiously, economically, socially, and so on. How to go beyond all the noise that human beings make? That's the question, sir. You want to discuss that? Something about an insight in listening which does not discriminate. Would you please go into that? Perhaps if we tackle the question of responsibility, we can come up on all this. Both what you are, sir about going beyond the fury of man's thought, man's conclusions and opinions, prejudices and so on, and also what is the quality of insight. Could we begin with talking about responsibility? That may include seriousness, so shall we begin with that? <coughs> May we? As educators, as teachers, as human beings, probably first human beings, then teachers, educators, as human beings, what is our responsibility? And to whom are we responsible? And for what? I don't know if you... So, discuss with... Please, it's dialogue. One, uh, and the others. It's a dialogue. A conversation between two people, friendly, who want to discuss, talk over together amicably, their problems, their 
troubles, their worries, their griefs, their pains, and so on, like two intimate friends who say, look, let's talk this over. And I hope we are in that relationship, not that I am talking, uh, sitting on a not very high platform. I remember once a guru came to see me in Bombay, one of the big gurus with a stick. And we were all sitting on a little mattress like this. And out of politeness, we got up, several of us, and asked him to sit on the mattress. Immediately, he put his stick there, he became the guru because of the little height of that mattress. I don't know if you see the joke of it. <laughs> so I'd like to discuss this question. As human beings, what are we responsible for, towards whom, and what is the quality of responsibility? In exploring that question, we'll, have to, we'll come upon this quality of seriousness. Are we responsible? Responsible to what we undertake, whether it's bad, good or indifferent, Responsible towards our students, towards our society, towards nature and so on, to the universe around us, the world around us, the people around us, the, our children, our husbands, family and so on. What, are, what do we mean by responsibility? Is responsibility a burden? It's a care. Big one? It's a care. Huh? Caring. First, is, is, when you are responsible, I'm asking, what is involved in that? Obviously, responsibility involves seriousness. One can't be slack in responsibility. One can't be indifferent. There is no sense of being in, uh, negligent in our responsibility. Responsibility implies diligent application. I don't know if you see the difference between negligence and diligence. to neglect and to be diligent in application. That involves responsibility, that involves seriousness. One is not serious when one is negligent, and one is really serious when you are diligent. If one may ask, what are we respons what does responsibility mean to each one of us? Mr. Naido undertakes to look after the estate. He has undertaken a great responsibility to look after the, God, the estate, the people, the whole land, the trees and so on, that is responsible for something. I'm not, we are not saying for something, about something, but the quality of responsibility. I want to, let's, uh, let's discuss this, because I think this is important. 
because in that many other things are included. If one is responsible, one cares infinitely. Responsibility. Answer, please. Out of what does it arise? Out of interest? <coughs> it's more than interest, isn't it? Care. Concern. Care. It's more than concern, isn't it? Listen. <coughs> A sense of dedication. Huh? A sense of dedication. The social worker is dedicated. The missionary is dedicated. The propagandist is dedicated. The guru is dedicated. The man who does rituals is dedicated. And the man who says, this is my life and I am doing it. I would call, I, I, that's only a very small part. I'm asking, um, Mr. Jagger, Pupulji asked, from what does this quality of responsibility arise? Is it love, sir? Huh? Love. Uh, now, sir, either you are theory, theoretically discussing it, or actually seeing that the bed out of which responsibility comes naturally, the, the field, the soil. If you say it is love, and I say it is, to me, <coughs> without that quality of love, one is negligent, irresponsible, there is no diligent application, there is not infinite care, <coughs> and from that there is abundance of energy, and so on. You say, sir, it's love. Why? Why do you say that? It's a discussion, sir. You say I'm not doubting what you say, or but or an inquiry. If you substitute a word that it arises out of love, then you will go again to how, from what does love arise? My question, my question to you, sir, is can responsibility arise other than from the matrix of self-knowing? I'm, put, I'm putting it to you. Are you saying that out of self-knowing, <coughs> responsibility arises naturally? A movement of self-knowing brings responsibility. Creates a being in which responsibility is. You see. Do we know ourselves? Do you know yourself? Please, sir, this Huh? Only in pockets. No, d only little bits. Is that it? Is it possible to know the whole movement of yourself?
All right, sir, let's begin. <laughs> I want to know myself. What is involved in that? Because I see if I don't know myself, I am really at the mercy of others. I am also, if I don't know myself, under the pressure of society, <coughs> under the pressure of institutions, organizations, the gurus, the you know, the whole world of pressure. And so it becomes very important to know oneself. If you, are, if you see that, can we discuss that? Because out of that may come responsibility, out of that may come the quality of love and the, the sense of extraordinary seriousness, not sorry little seri enthusiasm, enthusiasm about something or other. So can we discuss this, sirs? Now, I can discuss it. I don't feel want to discuss it. Because after all, if you're teaching history, that is the story of man. The story of man is himself. Right? So I want to know the story of myself. It's an in, it is a very, very ancient story. <coughs> to find the roots of that timeless state, I must begin where I am. Right? <coughs> I wonder if you <laughs> am I talking? Are you interested in all this as teachers? As human beings and as teachers. <coughs> <coughs> I must begin very near, to go very far. I can't go very far and say, well, I go out there, but not begin here. So I must begin very near, which is myself, to go very far. So what, what am I? Apart from what the psychologists, the Shankaras, the Buddhas, uh, the uh, all the propagandists, the priests, and the everybody says, uh, putting all that aside, because then if I say uh, I am that, I'm just copying the others, what the others say. But discarding all that, I must begin near, which is myself, and I begin to find out what am I. The story, perhaps, without a beginning, and perhaps with an end, I must find out myself. Because out of that may come a great sense of seriousness, responsibility and love. And am I prepared to give time to this? as I do yoga, as I do mathematics, as I do any various other things, am I also giving time to this? Go on, sir. <laughs> Are you giving time to this? Because you are teachers of history. And history is the story of man. The story of man is you. And to understand the you, you must give time as much you give time to cricket, basketball, anything. Sir, is the story of myself very uninteresting? It's not very uninteresting. It's very uninteresting. Is it? Trivial. I'm not sure. 
It all depends how you regard what is your approach to this question. I can say to myself, it's a very, this myself is a very small affair, rather boring, rather obvious, and uh, what of it? I'm saying that it's not different from the story of anyone else. Be pardon? I'm saying that it's not different from the story of anyone else. So, in the study of myself, I understand the study of man. <coughs> mm? I'm learning the story of man. <coughs> and therefore, I should have thought that would be a tremendous, vital interest. If I'm merely studying my own little backyard reactions, my own little worries and petty little ambitions, then I'm putting a very small, I'm enclosing myself to a very, very small area, and that is infinitely boring. But when I'm when I see I am the world and I am the representative of all mankind, then it becomes something extraordinary. I will have to discuss it. Did I like it? How do you study that you are? How do you see? See in the sense that you see the triviality or the movement of the self. How do you see that you are mankind? Now I'm going to go into a little bit. I was going to go see, into that. You, you know, uh, one says it. Uh, but how does one see it? I'm going to go into that. <coughs> one sees only the triviality. And, prob and in seeing the triviality, the nature of mankind is discovered. It is trivial. I'm going to, if I may, you know, give the. Let's talk about it. So do I, do you, and this is a challenge, not you must answer it, you can't just say, well, ah, go to sleep over it. It's a challenge. Are you separate from all the mankind? Mankind being his sorrow, his pain, his anxiety, his griefs, his pleasures, sexual and otherwise, his various deceptive cunning, all that, you know, which every human being goes through or is caught in that. So, obviously, you are that, no? You are part of that, or you are that. So factually, I would say no. Conceptually, you are. Ah, cons I'm not talking factually, of. Factually, you are. You you consider. Factually, you consider your pain, your sorrow, your. Of as course, unique. of course, of course, of course. That's one of our peculiarities. And that, I and understand the factual, that. and the conceptual is. That it is um, that my sorrow is the sorrow of mankind. But I know that, Papuji. Therefore, we must distinguish between a concept and actual. So, isn't there at least some quality of affection that that makes you see that other people are really like you, if not completely factually? But that's some feeling which, which gives you, I would say, a sense of responsibility. No, um, but shall I listen to it carefully. We all live with conclusions, right? With concepts, right? Concepts, conclusions are, are not the actual thing that's happening. Right? Why do human beings live in concepts, 
in conclusions, in ideals. Why? Why do you do it, sir? Don't go to sleep, for God's sake. It's a kind of escapism. Escapism from what? From the actuality. He knows he cannot actually talk about or think about the other's suffering in the same measure as it should be done. So Not he prefers to theorize and have concepts about it. No, do listen carefully. Do you, do you live in concepts, ideals? Conclusions. Isn't man doing that? Sir? Huh? Isn't, aren't you all doing that? I, I'm asking you. Where are, well, I think I do. I, I, I just, just wait. Please go slowly. All you gentlemen were so desperately silent. <coughs> hmm? Don't you live in concepts? Why? <coughs> In this, let's go into a little bit. Why? Is it that you cannot face the facts? Watch it. You cannot face the fact, and you are, you don't know what the fact is. So you are mentally, psychologically indifferent to the fact, and therefore from that draw a conclusion, which is what? Now, go slowly, please. This is very important, if you are interested in this kind of thing. Sir, would it not be that our perception of fact the horizon of fact is so constricted that our life and the life around us, that is the life of man, is like an incomplete story. We are not able to see, we are not able to comprehend. And so the only security we can get is through concept. We make a concept as a substitute for our ability to have clarity. To? Have clarity with regard to the whole. Have we got clarity with regard to the part? I think, I think the whole uh, theory of concept is that you can work with a concept. That's what you're saying. And you're also saying you can work with a concept, and concept is a substitute for your inabil inability to see the whole. Yeah, yeah, this is what I was saying. Yeah, you are saying that. I you say, call it in may a I say something? Yes, please. It is true. This is true in the field of science, mathematics, technical subjects, facts, that concepts help you to work. It helps of concepts. With, with true concepts you can work. It's a, it's, a, it's a tool. But do you think that concepts are a, is a good tool in the, in the field of living or the field of the mind? It's a very interesting question. I question whether even in science you can work with concepts. Yes. Concepts are mean of, is a means of communication. No, no. I must be clear what we mean by concepts. To conceive. We begin to conceive. Hmm? To concept is really born out of the conception. Yeah, that's true. Uh, go, 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 go. <laughs> In fact, a concept is a crystallization of something which you have seen. No, no, go slow, Nara. I'm not sure you are yes. being accurate. Why do I want a concept at all? There is only fact. Why do you make of a, the fact into a concept, into a conception, into an idea? You follow what I'm saying? Why? Let us see that I see a railway line on a horizon. 
I see a part of it. Part of it is obstructed. I again see the railway line. Again, it is obstructed. Again, I see the railway line, or it may be a river which I see in the same fashion. Now, the portions that are obstructed, I I rebuild in my mind. I am saying that concept is an approximation to a fact which I do not perceive. I don't. I'm sorry. So, in the, I think what Anshuji is saying. In the instance when one looks at oneself, one sees instances of what? Anger, triviality, just different things. One sees that instance. The moment you look beyond that particular uh, flash of it in yourself, it seems to me a concept comes in. You say, I am angry, I am trivial, I am all these things. You're immediately moved into the area of a concept. And when you speak of seeing the whole of something in oneself, is the difficulty in that because we perceive just the flashes of ourselves and never a whole? I understand what you're saying, but I'm not sure we have explained the process of making concepts. Facts are unpalatable. No, 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 no. you're unpalatable. I question you. You come to the fact with already a conclusion that is unpalatable or that is pleasurable. Therefore, you're still thinking in terms of concepts. Do we see the fact at all? Huh? Do we really see the fact? That's what I want to get at. If you have patience, go into it. Yeah. Generally, in, in science, a concept arises in a certain way. If you ask me in mathematics, there is a certain sequence, there is an order. Out of that, there is a pattern, a design. The whole thing is a flow. And then out of that, there is a logic, mathematical logic at one end. The other end is a formula, which is a concept. Right? The formula is a crystallization of this whole flow, which is slowness, sequence, order, order pattern. pattern and design. At one end, you make a, you make a formula of it for ready, as a ready reckoner. It, it, it works. But people can know a formula and not know the whole sequence and the flow. It yes. Happens. I would like to ask one question. Is a concept and a symbol exactly the same? Is a concept and a symbol exactly the same? No, I'm just thinking about scientific concept. No, I'm, I'm just putting it to you. No, I think symbol has a different meaning from a concept. But if you say that the formula crystallizes the whole movement of thought. The formula is a, is a working hypothesis, <coughs> which is which you, uh, which you which is shorthand, <coughs> concise form words, for a whole process of understanding. Yeah, it stands as a symbol for the whole process. Then. Makes for easy communication. Still it's a ready reckoner. Some... It's a ready reckoner. You can uh, work with it, but it does not show you the whole flow of clarity or sequence. It doesn't show you, but it's one end. It's a dead end. Could be, but uh, according to what Mrs. Jaika just said, they ultimately mean the same, and it, it stands for the whole thing. So it doesn't it stand. It doesn't stand for the whole thing. It could never stand. The formula. If you teach mathematics through a formula. You give some memory techniques, there's no understanding. It can never stand for the whole thing, the formula. Even in even in scientific subjects, it never stands for the whole. But you can work with it. If some child doesn't understand the whole mathematical thinking, you can give, give him the formula and he will calculate with it. But it's not a mathematics. See the dictionary meaning of concept and symbol together. But I do but can even go into it just now. So number two, number two is it's not a fact. Numeral two is a symbol. Mm. Right. What did you say? Yeah, Numeral, right. two. Right. Numeral two is it's a, a symbol. symbol. But it's always related to something you can sort of feel about Because, two. may I ask something, number two is a symbol because of number one? No, no what no. I'm saying is, number two is a concept, numeral two is a symbol. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Symbol is again, ah, ha, ha, ha. you are crystallizing much more. When you come to your symbol, the dead end of the very dead end of the Very clear. Okay. Yes. Yes.
where are we at the end of it? <laughs> I, I think I, I I'm not being sarcastic. I want to know where we are at the end of this. Even in scientific thought, a formula, which is a concept, is it n? Does it's a dead end? Dead end. It does not show the whole process of understanding. Yeah. So, why do you have a concept? After all this explanation of two symbols, I understand all that. Just meet Nara. Why do you have a concept in life? Because I think we work through dead ends. <laughs> so, why? For many things, concepts are, you know, are important, they're necessary. And possibly we have concepts in the wrong fields because we, we carry it through because of habit or because of laziness. But in uh, many things it's necessary. Look, Scott, uh, Narayan is saying it's a dead end. And we live with dead ends. And yet, and yet, for working purposes, concepts are absolutely necessary. I wonder. Well, could I give you an example of? I've been thinking of, of uh, something I'd noticed the other day, and I was working. There was something that there was something that was broken. I needed to repair it. I formed an idea, and then I checked the idea with the fact. I I probed. The idea was wrong. I dropped it. I had to form another idea. The idea I probed, and that looked like it checked out. So then I continued to probe. Now, without that original, without the idea, I wouldn't have known how to probe or where to probe. I had to keep checking it with the facts, but I had to have an idea in order to work. Are you saying that because of concepts, you can proceed with trial and error? In, no, in it's more than it? trial and error. It's, huh? No, it's more than trial and error. Because with concepts, you know <coughs> where you can begin to look to see. I wonder if, if you had no concepts, God, idea, mm -hmm. and you looked without a concept, what would have happened? Uh -huh. It goes, huh? no, 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 yeah, no. You can't see electricity, Krishnaji, something like that, you see? So you have to have certain knowledge of how that works and be able to form ideas of how it works. So you are saying it is necessary in the field of mechanics? Yes. Huh? Yes. And we, so our minds have become mechanical. And we carry that. <laughs> Just a minute, look. In the field of mechanics, uh, concepts are necessary. Yes. That is, concepts help you to find mechanical solutions. And our minds have become mechanical, yes. repetitive, habitual, routine, following one thing after repeating, repeating, repeating. So it has become mechanical. And because it is mechanical, concepts have become necessary. Or, or Concepts help to oil the machinery of mechanical thinking. I was trying to say that, that concepts are necessary for mechanical things and that we mistakenly carry it into psychological yeah, things. That's what I'm getting. I'm moving it from the. But I see. Is there a little uh, clue in what Scott said? He continually checked against the reality, which was how yes. the machine worked. Now, Narayan talks about dead end. Is it that we make a concept and then go drifting off in the concepts, never coming back to check or to be close to the reality? Quite right. Itself? It's quite, quite. I so. want to come to the story of man and bring this concept to that. I say there is the science of anthropology. Now, the science of anthropology has really been built up in fabricating a pattern of concepts concerning the story of man. So I am saying that it is a tool of knowing. That's what most people say. That's the, that's the classical definition of concepts. It's a tool for knowing. It started with this that how do you see the fact 
that you are the history of man. How do you see the fact which is seeing it as a movement in consciousness? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Then how, how do you see it as a fact? And that's why I'm questioning from the beginning, why do you have a concept at all? That's what you, you, but we have brought in history of mankind, sir. What I'm coming to that later, Pupuji. First, I must be clear why I make concepts. When I hear a statement that you are the world, I may, I've already made a conclusion of it, made an idea of it. Why? That's my whole. The whole structure of knowledge is based on concepts. So, you have a concept, haven't you? Yes. Why? You don't ask that question, you ask yourself. Generally, we have concepts because we lack perception. No, so don't, don't reduce it to that. Find out you why I have concepts, ideas, away from the fact. Because my entire knowledge is based on that concept, sir. Yes, sir. All, the action, all action is based on those concepts, sir. Huh? Since all action is based on those concepts. That's right. And since one has to act, one so, keeps the concepts. Look, I make a statement. Just l listen to it, please. I make a statement that you are the world. How do you listen to it, and wh when you do listen to it, why do you make a concept of it? Why don't you rem remain with the fact and go into the fact, not with the help of a concept? I wonder if you are... With concept, I'm very sure that I know it. No, sir! Concept is the most deceptive thing. So when I say to you, I love you, do you make a concept of it? Huh? Huh? You must be I won't use strong words. <laughs> I mean when somebody says I love you, it's not it's not a concept. So the fact is that you say that word is not the thing and everybody understands. I say the concept also is only a near approximation and not the thing. That Therefore, why do I like why do I create it? Why do I have it? It's a habit. Sir. Huh? It's a habit. Habit, which means what? That your mind, your thought, is caught in a habit. Whatever you hear, you make into a habit. And. Uh, it's a concept the moment it goes into your brain, because the thought process, which is mechanical, is perceived in, in images. I think it is, if I may point out, is the quali it is you are missing the actual fact of hearing. When you tell me I'm the world, I listen to it without any conclusion, without any concept, without any idea. I just listen to it so that it end like a seed that enters into me. Do you listen that way? <coughs> because you don't listen that way, you make a concept of it. Uh, wait, it's registered in the brain. The brain is has become mechanical, mm -hmm. habitual. 
make um, routine and says conclusion. The actual function of the brain, as it is now, I'm not an expert on brain, but I will look this simple enough, <coughs> is to register. That's his function. Right? Would you? I want to ask one question, sir. Is this recording an impediment to hearing? Are you saying is recording an impediment? Now just make sir. Now wait a minute, you put me a question. How do I listen to that? How do you listen to it? Is the process of recording, which is the function of the brain, is that necessary? Is asking. How do you listen to that? Well, so how do you listen to it? We listen through our memories. Huh? We listen through our memories. Yes, sir. Which means what? Uh, Ajiji makes a statement, which is a question. Is recording necessary? I hear that very carefully. I have no conclusion. I have no answer. I have no. I don't come up with what some professor says about it. I listen to it, and I see clearly. Recording is necessary. Otherwise, I. I wouldn't recognize you, otherwise I wouldn't be able to talk to you in English. I wouldn't be able to know where my, the room is. So recording, apparently, <coughs> is necessary. Right? Right, sir? But I'm asking, is that my whole life? The name, the form, the um, language, where to remember how to drive a car, and so on, so on. Is that? I am asking a slightly different question. I am saying there is listening and learning, and there is listening and recording, <coughs> but no learning. I don't record. That's what I'm, I want. To I am pointing out to you that there may be a recording without learning. And is it possible that there is a listening and learning and no recording or, or recording? It yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I wonder if the others are following all this. Are you interested in all this? Isn't it a question of what is done with the recording? The recording, it would seem to me, is a neurological fact. It happens yes. instantaneously without any volition or acceptance. Isn't, isn't it a question? of a listening in which there's an involuntary reflex or in listening in which there is no reflex. Would that be a listening in which the recording is, is like a book, it's instantly put away on a shelf and one... I, I wouldn't even state that. I say there, there is a listening in which there is no movement and there's a listening in which there's an immediate reflex. Now, the immediate respect, uh, reflex is the brain cells responding from registration, regist registering and reacting. In the other, I do not know, but there is no reflex. Would you say that the brain records, but the, the listening continues without the reflection of that just stored in the brain. Without it, forward, without without it out of that registration, creating, if I will put it, another ripple. Yes. Is, 
May may to the question at you said in a different way. You are implying at you there's a listening and there's a learning. You are also saying there's a listening and a recording but no learning. That's right. Now what ah, are you saying? Moment you record you have already learned. <laughs> no, he's saying I, I, I just stop now and yeah. stop there and listen to it carefully. Recording and learning. Recording is learning. Yes. You can't separate the two. Recording is factual. And then recording is learning. Yes. It's a, it's a, if it is factual. Recording is learning. Don't see if. Yes. That I wanted to. But I question that. Huh? I question that. <coughs> so, why does the brain record? I would like to ask you a question. <laughs> you have been discussing, it, you have been listening, you can reproduce what has been said because it's a logical thing which is going on. In that sense your brain has recorded because otherwise it could not Granted, granted, granted. The that only call. difference between that listening of yours and the listening which is here is that your listening has recorded and then been stable. It's, it records and it's total. While in us, the, re the listening and the recording immediately s sends forward other ripples. Otherwise, you, how can you say that you do not record? You do record because you would not remember. No, no, I'll explain a little bit. Let me explain. Let me go into a little bit more closely. You are interested in all this? Huh? Yes? Yes. Huh? What is the in purpose of recording? I want to find out. Hmm? Why does the brain record? Obviously, from the ancient of days, it has recorded danger. Right? I'm go going very, very slowly. Don't be impatient. My ancestors, a million years ago, recorded the danger of an animal. Right? The danger of a precipice. Danger. And that day. The recording of that danger is to find security, is to avoid danger, which is seeking security. So the brain is recording to be secure and avoid any kind of danger, any kind of mishap, any kind of hurt. That is, having pain last week has been recorded. Right? Right? You are following this? Has been recorded. And the record continues hmm, and says, I might have that pain again, and therefore fear is brought into being. Now, question is, the pain of yesterday, can that be not registered at all, so as not to continue, so as to create fear? You follow what I am talking about? That is, I sat in a dentist chair, I am talking about myself, for four hours went at it. <laughs> and when he finished, there was absolutely no recording of it. Wait, why? Go on, say, inquire. That is, we have pain, and record, and the record continues. 
inviting fear that you might have it again. Now, can you have pain today? Finish with it. You understand what I mean? Not carry it over. Wait, so the carrying it over is the problem. Supposing one drove along a road and out of turn the car skidded, would you not, driving that road again in wet weather, I would be careful. To the driver, I would be careful. I would be careful. Yes. But is that not No, that no, place? that is. Just no, that let's go into it very carefully. I want this. Please understand this. The reason for recording is for self preservation. Right? That's obvious. Now, there's the physical, psych physical preservation and the psychological preservation, right? The physical re preservation is absolutely necessary. Otherwise, you now I'm questioning whether psychological preservation is not an illusion a fiction carried over from the physical preservation into the psychological field. If you if you respect, if I may ask you, I wanted to ask a question directly after the dentist experience. It is this, that when you said there is no recording after four hours, is it the psychological recording that is not there or the factual recording? Factual memory is there that no, I sat no. and I don't bother about me. I'm no, no, not talking about you. I, I, no, he, he's right, sir. The yes. factual <laughs> memory of sitting in that chair, the drill going into your. Mm, to no, I have no record of no, no. no, even the factual memory. No. Then you couldn't repeat it today. I, I repeat. <laughs> the repetition is merely the, a verbal statement of what has been. It is not recording. No, I even if it is not, if it is a verbal statement of what has been, I know what you. I know what you are trying to. I'm not as clever as you people. <laughs> 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 what is the difference between a verbal statement and a recording? What's the difference between a verbal statement and a recording? If you will believe me, there is no recording of that pain. I don't want you to believe me, but I'm just stating a fact. Wait, wait. But what else is there? You see, sir, if I may pursue it a little bit with you, there appear to be two things. The brain, by its very nature, will record fact. Not that only facts. No, the not only facts, but the conclusions about the fact. I'm going coming to that. The fact that you sat in the chair, the fact that the drill took place. I wish I hadn't brought it the, up. <laughs> the fact that there was pain. But there is in pain the factual statement that there was pain and the psychological, emotional content of that pain being reborn in one. Now, that, that is what there is no re registration now. No, no, it's not a registration, if I may. It is a, there is a part of the brain which stores emotional, psychological responses. May I say something? So You're answering her? Yes. Yeah. The physical that is carried over to the psychological is so instantaneous that I think that looks that needs to be looked into. I, 
I question, I mean, I would question whether it's the physical which is carried over. No, no. The, 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 physic, the attitude to the physical is so instantaneously carried over to the psychological, and I think that creates a lot of, uh, lot of uh, <coughs> confusion. I feel, sir, if you have become one with the pain, you don't have hesitation. Mm. Not you don't become one with the pain. You see, that's the whole thing, Pukulji. I would like to go into this rather directly, if you don't mind. There is no self. No, no, there is no self, therefore there is neither danger nor the other. This is, no, don't ask, please, this is, I'm talking about, I'm talking about a cuckoo. Yeah. No, this is very important, this is really, if you go into it, it's extraordinary, that is, there is no recording when the mind is not concerned with the danger or not danger. Hmm? Pleasure or fear, reward or punishment. I wonder if I, if I am I made this somewhat clear? There is no center of the experiencer. There is no experiencer. Huh? Does this mean anything? This means such a, huh? such a body is incapable of having a self-preservation instinct. No, 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 of course we have. I wouldn't go run, da, jump out of that window. <laughs> I'm not cuckoo. I'm not neurotic. I was no. think, sir, this is in a, in a, in a surgical operation, at a certain degree of anesthesia, the muscle still retains its reflexes. And at a deeper level of anesthesia, the muscle even loses that. I would like to be corrected by Dr. Of course, I have been the one has been operated. So, what I see that these no, you are physical facts. And I Sir, you are missing the point. When there is no center of the me, the registration is so trivial, it's not existent. So we started with responsibility. What is the responsibility? What is the question of responsibility in relation? what you have said just now. It's total responsibility. I don't know. You are you interested in all this book? I don't know. I'll go. Suppose you have no problems. Hmm? No problems at all. Physical, psychological, uh, super conscious, no problems at all. What is the state of your mind? Hmm? Come on, sir, answer it. You have financial problems, psychological problems. Uh, problems of sex, problems of loneliness, problem this, ten different things. 
and you carry them day after day, day after day, day after day, which obviously destroys the mind, brain. It's like having tremendous burden on it. Now, if you have no problem, and I mean no problem, neither carrying it over, if a problem arises, solve it instantly. Then what is the state of your mind? Now, then you go to the dentist, sit for several hours there. Is that a problem? You, fo you follow this? The problem will arise, arises only when, uh, when the dentist says, come back next week for three hours. And you say, my God! Right? See that quality. So, first see the quality of it. The brain has no centre from which it is acting. a conclusion, a principle, an ideal, uh, all the rest of it. Is that, first of all, is that possible? Yeah, I may say, yes, it's possible, and they say, oh, please. But is that possible to you? <coughs> to live a life without a single problem? And a problem arises, resolve it instantly. Don't allow a time interval. It's, uh, there is a, uh, it's advocated that we stay with the problem in order to solve it. Yeah. What do stay you with it instantly, which means no conclusions, no desire to solve it. You follow? The avoidance. Running away from it is the problem. I wonder if you see. In itself, it has no problem. So, let's come back to the question. I'm an educator. Sorry. <laughs> How am I? To help the student and therefore help myself, both of us, being in the same boat, how am I to help him to register the least amount? And not register things, not register any psychological problem. You understand? You understand this gives you tremendous uh, creative door. Yeah, I would like to ask a question. Can you do that with a student? Can you do that with a student? Without awakening this process of self-knowing? To what? Without awakening in the student this process of self-knowing? Can you do this, what you're saying? It's impossible, poor little chap, he won't even know what then, I'm talking then about. How, then if you do not, if that is not the way, then how does he see? Sir, I think uh, this is not quite a correct question, because this is a new process of learning. This is a new process of learning. You Quite can't right. say the student doesn't no. know anything, we no. is no self no. Quite right. I am merely saying no, that we are with a group of students and I say to the students, wait, there is somebody else saying something to you. And they are all silent. And there is the whisper in the leaves. And I said, You get it? No, I, now I, there is no recording in this, but I do think it is possible to start at the youngest age. And without any theory of self-knowing, 
to set a process of learning which is itself the ground of self mm -hmm. i question that sir. i would like to this has to, this i would question very greatly <coughs> i question whether it is whether learning <coughs> is possible without the perceptive state of still self knowing no puji i am I really would I like want to him to teach. I am concerned with this as a teacher, yes. as a <coughs> educator. There is that student. I want him. I not want him. I want. I will. My responsibility is that neither he nor I function from a centre. That's all, right? So I'm going to find out a way, a learn, a way of teaching him this. Yes, but it, we have talked about it, sir. We have talked about it endlessly. But it, it does not happen. So why? Def, Wait, def, why? No, why doesn't it happen? Because I, I say, I mean, I may be wrong. I have no. Idea. I failed and I don't know but I say because of our incapacity to awaken within ourselves and within the child this perceptive process I won't even use the word self knowing no because you are you don't feel totally responsible but one is linked to the other you no no you are you uh, so look I am if I No, are you responsible for the students? Hmm? Oh, for God's sake! Are you responsible for him? Sir, everybody is responsible in a limited way. That's no, sir. Way. Responsible means. Total responsibility is under your you charge. Say, that's what you say, but what happens is everybody feels responsible in a limited way. This is my responsibility. Beyond that, I have no responsibility. Then go on. Then I say, go and jump in I'm, the lake. I'm there may, there is the no fact. lake here. <laughs> that's what happens in every school. I know, sir. Here we are asking. We want a special kind of school because a, a new generation must be come out of this, not the dead old people, right? And why don't you feel totally responsible? Amma, do you feel totally responsible? I feel responsible. No, <laughs> no, I'm not. Don't quibble Sir, with. You can't feel total responsibility within an organization. Why not? How can you? It's all laid. What down. is an organization? There's a set of responsibilities laid down for every every person or most. No, if you feel totally responsible, what will be your action? To help with the organization. Huh? No, no, you wouldn't say help with it. You'll put it in the right place. Right? So there's just one person. And and we. One person creates. No, sir, and I think William is the same. So, one is to one has one's child, let alone the school. One is totally responsible. Does one does do it with one's child? Of course not. No, that's what I'm saying. Then where is the organization like, there? No, that's again, it's another family. You are hemmed down. I think uh, you can't I think really have. Is, I think there is some confusion the about what total responsibility implies. Yes. I think one could have a child, one's own child. And uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you're totally responsible. I, I would like to take on what uh, Atuji was saying in relation to education. When you present a certain thing in the right way to the child, he is capable of looking, he is capable of listening, and sometimes I am beginning to feel that the child is more honest about this than the adult. 
because his energies are not twisted yet in many ways as with adults and it, I think one has to be very careful before one says can the child be perceptive I think many of the children if you, if you see some of the children here are very very perceptive and also I think their energies are all intact mm. whether the educator has the insight um, depth and uh, ways of communicating it that's a different question I wouldn't say that the child is uh, has no receptivity. I'm not talking of the role of the child here. No, I'm talking the, of the. I'm talking of the role of the educator. Yes. No, I'm, I'm talking about the well, the child. If the educator has the insight and relationship and the way of communicating, I think there is something happening. This is the inevitable, right? Of course. This it is, is not an if. It's, it's a valid thing. No. You cannot say that the adult through self-knowing has come to direct perception and the child is denied or hasn't no, got I, so. I think you are mistaken what I say. I am not saying that no, at I'm all. Saying this because <coughs> one has to be very careful. No, no. I am not saying that at all. When I, one talks of total responsibility with regard to a child, what does it mean in actuality? Wait, I will say you. Mr. Naidu feels, don't you, sir, totally responsible for the whole estate? Yes. yes. Why? What does that imply? You are watching over the trees, the bookman, the or water, the grain, the, you are you're, you're embracing the whole thing. Right? And you feel tremendously responsible in your embrace. Right? Right? responsible for the estate, it, it concerns him vitally to be interested or, I mean, responsible for the, the crops and things. He is. Is he totally responsible for each and every worker on the estate? Does not total responsibility entail every aspect of it? Of this? course, of course. Okay. It will be in a limited <coughs> sense, isn't it? Ask him. That's what I'm trying to come uh, put across, sir. That I don't think any one of us is really totally responsible. We have pockets of responsibility. So when you are responsible for something in a limited way, uh, what is involved is comparison, conflict, and fear. That's what comes to often. <laughs> it seems that Maybe. responsible if there is responsibility, it's not doesn't work in units and pockets. It's it's like there's action. But that's it a doesn't you don't go out and say I'm gonna do it here and there and here. You don't say it, but the fact still remains that you are doing only a limited amount. How can, re how can no, responsibility no, no. be limited? If there's responsibility, it is. I so we are still dealing with concepts then. We are only having a concept of the total responsibility. So we are not dealing with it, in fact. Why should Mr. Naidu be responsible only for the estate? He must be responsible for whole of Vishwa, isn't it? No, may I say something? Suppose you are teaching biology and I am teaching mathematics. Yeah. How does that deny responsibility? You it know, you deny. know biology. You are teaching biology. I know mathematics. I teach mathematics. That does not come in the way. It's only a, a, it's a convenient arrangement. I don't know biology, and you don't know mathematics. Right. But if you say that functional division makes for irresponsibility, uh, that that would be the wrong approach. No, I'm not saying that it makes for irresponsibility. All I'm trying to bring out is we are limited in our responsibility. However, whatever subject you might handle, whatever facet you might look after, the fact still remains we are dealing with the concept of total responsibility, but no, in I'm actuality not, uh, we are only I, having I, I, limited I, I, responsibility. What I said was very simple, you see, I was not thinking of total responsibility. If you teach biology and my, uh, my teaching mathematics does not come in the way of our being responsible in a wider sense. It should. It doesn't come in the way of being in responsible fact, in the wider sense. It is a functional convenience. It's very it helps. But Can you not function as total responsibility? Are we functioning? No. That's what I'm asking. It may be a limited thing, but in that case... The moment you say maybe it's limited, you are accepting that it is limited, isn't it? That is exactly what I'm trying to say. Would you say biologically, you will be at one place, but you, at the same time, the feeling no, is... No, I think may, may I say something? I'm, I'm afraid may I'm I say something? Yes. He said uh, total responsibility for the educator and the child to learn without a center. It can be done at all times. It, 
isn't it? Isn't that and that become total responsibility? But uh, are we really doing that? Are we mean sorry asking other person to do it? No, no. I mean I would like to know since I don't know how to go look, about it. Look, like Mrs. Know. Major. I like Maybe to. Maybe he knows about it. You see. May I chip in? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking. Total re responsibility implies. Implies you may not have it. You may, have, but the the content of total responsibility is love. Right. Is the feeling of real, you know, the quality of it. Would you say that quality is limited in operation? If the quality is limited, the operation will be limited. But if the quality is that sense of abundant something, then it's operating wherever you are. But you may teach mathematics. It, the thing is, because it is that total, it is. You don't call it limited. I wonder if you see. No. When you make it synonymous with love. Ah, obviously. I said so. We at least in, in our discussion, we said total responsibility implies abundance of this quality. You see, that is what we are missing. Therefore, we are playing around all this. How do you have that? We haven't got it, and the child hasn't got it. What shall we do? See that it isn't a problem, and you've got to solve it. We are just going round and round and round. You see, this is the central issue. Total responsibility implies this quality of great effect. You know, all the, I, I don't like to use the word all the time, it spoils it. Why haven't you got it? Huh? Why? Why, sir? Love is not flowing towards them. Huh? The love is not flowing towards the children. I no. It's the water, sir. You can drink. When the child drinks it, or it's water flowing. So there isn't the reason that it isn't universal amongst people. Is again the self. Is the one is in the self. <coughs> So you you see, you don't say no. This is the thing I must resolve, and hold it, work at it. You spend an hour in yoga. You spend an hour in mathematics. Everything but this. So I said. If that is missing here, as an educator, then what the Dickens are we doing? I won't accept that you are missing it. I don't think you have worked at it. 
you haven't said this is as important as your blasted mathematics. And I am, you have studied, you have gone into mathematics, you have passed examination, taken degrees and all the rest of it, and you haven't given ten minutes to the other. So I don't think it is a lack of time, lack of interest. I don't think you have put your energies in that direction to find out. Do we meet next weekend? Yes, sir. Good. We can hang each other. 